Leonard, my eldest son Ralph's wife, paid a rare solo visit to our home, where she normally arrived with Ralph by her side. As I welcomed her in, she wasted no time in delivering her message bluntly. Don't bother coming to the wedding, Jody. Ralph and I move in different circles, she declared. Lena's words caught me off guard, though her tendency for rudeness was nothing new. What do you mean? I asked, trying to make sense of her statement. Lena let out an exasperated sigh, her demeanor condescending. I hate having to explain this to you. I graduated from a top university and work at the prestigious trading company where Ralph also works. You, on the other hand, went to some third-rate college and sell insurance. It's embarrassing to have someone like you in the family, she sneered. Irritated, I responded. There's no shame in selling insurance, you know. Lena smirked dismissively. Oh, is Jody upset now? How scary, she taunted. In any case, the decision is made. Ralph will see things my way, she added, her smile turning malicious. Exhausted, I simply nodded. I'm Jody, 65 years old, working in insurance sales for the same company since I graduated. I began. Dealing with failed contracts and customer complaints can be tough, but landing a big new contract and receiving congratulations from the sales department makes it rewarding. I continued, I'm a single mother now. My husband and I had different values and argued constantly. Ralph, our son, witnessed these difficult times. Eventually, the arguments led to the end of our marriage, and despite financial uncertainties, my husband chose not to take Ralph with him. I decided to raise Ralph on my own. Balancing work and parenting through his rebellious phase was challenging, but I managed. The hardworking Ralph I raised recently introduced me to Lenner, a colleague he grew close to at work. Today was the day Ralph would bring Lenner over. Although Ralph and I lived together, he went out to pick up Lenner. When the doorbell rang, Billy stood. Nice to meet you. I'm Lena. Sorry for the sudden visit. I brought you a little something, Ralph's wife said, handing me a paper bag filled with cookies from a renowned department store. Oh, you really didn't have to go to the trouble. Thank you, I replied warmly. It's just a small gesture, Lena modestly replied, but I insisted. No, thank you for the lovely gift. Please come in. With a smile, I invited Ralph and Leonard into our home, and we settled into casual conversation. Leonard shared stories of her upbringing, how she and Ralph grew close and spoke fondly of Ralph's work life. Then she curiously asked, By the way, what do you do for work, Jody? I'm in insurance sales, I replied cheerfully. At that moment, I noticed a fleeting twist in Leonard's smile. Was I imagining it? I glanced at her again, but her expression had returned to normal. We continued our conversation and wrapped up the evening. That momentary look on Lena's face lingered in my thoughts. What could it have meant? Since then, Ralph began bringing Lena around more often as wedding preparations took center stage. With my ex-husband absent from the planning, I had to take on tasks my former spouse would have handled. This was expected since he had refused custody of Ralph. There was much to organize, speeches, responses to family inquiries, and more. I needed to start planning my remarks soon, despite my busy work schedule. Lena's increasing visits left me with dwindling personal time, making every moment precious. As I pondered, Lena continued with her questions. Suddenly, she began discussing her wedding dress. I absolutely must have a bright blue dress with scattered sequins. It will look stunning, she declared. Then she turned to me. By the way, Jody, what kind of dress did you wear at your wedding? I hesitated, caught off guard. Ralph should have informed her about my divorce. Before I could respond, Ralph intervened, placing a hand on Lena's shoulder. It's okay, he interjected. Even though she's divorced, it's all in the past, right? I could never imagine being divorced. It would be too embarrassing and miserable. But then, Jody, you're practically a stranger to me, so I can't really understand your feelings, Lena added with a laugh. Feeling uneasy, I forced a smile and changed the subject. Ralph glanced at me apologetically, but Lena's expression seemed oddly triumphant. Her increasingly dismissive attitude and constant labeling of me as a stranger troubled me deeply. Jody's just a stranger, after all, she would say whenever something came up. Ralph would reprimand her, but Lanner's unfairness persisted. Perhaps she truly held a poor opinion of me. Her demeanor was deteriorating, and even Ralph seemed uneasy about her behavior lately. I found myself pondering over Ralph's occasional thoughtful gestures when Lanner unexpectedly arrived alone. The doorbell rang, and I hesitated, wondering who it could be. To my surprise, there stood Lanner, without Ralph by her side. Despite the unease, I welcomed her inside. 
Immediately upon entering, Lena looked down at me. Jody, our backgrounds are quite different, so please don't attend the wedding, she stated bluntly. I was taken aback by her abrupt rudeness. What do you mean? I asked, my brows furrowing in confusion. I knew Lena had a tendency to be brusque, but this was beyond anything I had expected. Lena sighed heavily. I just can't tolerate your cluelessness, Jody. I graduated from a prestigious university and work at the same top-tier trading company as Ralph. Meanwhile, you're just an insurance salesperson from a third-rate college. It's embarrassing to have someone like you in our family, she added, her expression filled with disdain. I retorted, annoyed, please refrain from looking down on insurance work. It's not the demeaning job you seem to think it is. Standing up to her seemed to provoke Laner. Jody's upset. How frightening, she remarked with a sneer. Anyway, the decision is made. Ralph will surely side with me, Lena declared, flashing a malicious smile. She had made this decision without consulting Ralph first. I was stunned by her lack of consideration. The notion that a groom's mother would be excluded from the wedding was unheard of. It dawned on me that Lena had been concealing her true nature all along. Exhausted from dealing with Lena, I simply said, I understand, and escorted her out. Privately, I seethed with frustration. Despite my wariness, I couldn't bear the thought of someone as rude as Lena marrying my beloved Ralph. Yet the wedding date was set only a week away. I pondered deeply. Then it struck me. I had an idea. Then came the wedding day. At the reception, Lena's flamboyantly dressed friends greeted guests and collected congratulatory gifts. Meanwhile, the parents-in-law were in Lena's dressing room. Secretly, I waited in Ralph's dressing room, keeping out of Lena's sight. Earlier, I had discreetly provided Ralph with a voice recorder and shared my encounter with Lena from that day. Fortunately, I had recorded it using a recorder I happened to have for work. Upon hearing the recording, Ralph was initially disturbed but quickly grasped the situation. Eventually, he broke down in tears and became furious. For my sake, he decided to call off the wedding and end the engagement with Lena. However, canceling so close to the wedding date would incur a significant fee. Therefore, we agreed to teach Lena a lesson she would it soon forget. Finally, the wedding ceremony commenced. Taking place in a restaurant, the atmosphere was more akin to a casual reception. I positioned myself discreetly near an exit door where I could observe without drawing Lena's attention. The host announced the entrance of the bride and groom, and the door opened for Ralph and Lena to make their appearance. Lena's initial smile froze into a puzzled expression as she looked around. Ha, huh, she muttered under her breath. On the wedding day, all the relatives were conspicuously absent. It made sense that Ralph's relatives wouldn't be there. Ralph and I had personally asked them not to attend, but Lena's relatives were also missing. The seats designated for them sat empty, causing discomfort for the parents-in-law who scanned the room awkwardly, clearly perplexed by the situation. Even Lena's friends appeared baffled, whispering among themselves as they noticed two entirely vacant tables. Sensing the tension, Ralph seized the microphone from the host and announced, The wedding is cancelled. Tonight, we'll simply enjoy a dinner party instead. His laughter filled the room. What? Lena exclaimed in disbelief. But Ralph wasn't finished with his message to her. Amidst the chaos that ensued, he continued, Today was meant to be my wedding day with Lena by my side. However, Lena has consistently treated my mother as a stranger and has been disrespectful to her. She even demanded that my mom not attend today's wedding. Here's the proof. Then, the audio recording from that day filled the hall. Don't come to the wedding because Jody and I are from different social classes. Lena's disdainful laughter echoed through the room alongside her words. Lena's parents, Hugh and Tiana, seemed shocked upon hearing the reason for my absence from the wedding. They turned to Lena with shaken voices, asking, Lena, what is this about? Surely this isn't true. You wouldn't say such hurtful things, would you? Their faces displayed a mixture of confusion and anger as they confronted Lena, who stood frozen in her wedding attire, her face drained of color. Ralph calmly addressed Lena. Do you now understand why this has happened? Lena, visibly distressed, snapped back defensively. How should I know? The parents-in-law were too overwhelmed by the unfolding situation to respond. Seeing the silence, Ralph spoke up again, his voice carrying more urgency. Then let the evidence speak for itself. At Ralph's signal, a staff member opened the door near the exit, casting a spotlight on someone waiting outside. I stood before Ralph, Lanner, and their parents, feeling the weight of the moment. 
Lena's eyes blazed with fury as she directed her anger towards me. It's all your fault. You've ruined my wedding, you worthless old hag from some third-rate university and company. Lena's shout echoed in the room, her disheveled hair and partially ruined gown revealing her unraveling composure. Lena, what on earth are you saying? That's Ralph's mother. Hugh's voice boomed with reproach. Tiana, visibly upset, added tearfully, Yes, Lena, that's terribly disrespectful. She couldn't hide her disappointment in her daughter's behavior. Before she could continue, I intervened firmly, Enough, Lena. I understand you don't like me, but I won't tolerate such disdain, especially for my potential daughter-in-law. Lena clicked her tongue in frustration, her true nature laid bare. I didn't realize you were like this, Lena. My opinion of you has plummeted, Ralph murmured, is disillusionment evident. Turning to Lena, I asked pointedly, Do you wonder why your own relatives aren't here today? Lena looked away, indifferent. It's a shame, your lack of empathy, Lena, is truly distasteful, I added, echoing her own hurtful words from our earlier confrontation. Lena glared at me, her expression contorted and difficult to bear. Ralph, too, seemed to be distancing himself from her. Enough of this already. You're being incredibly rude, Lena snapped, seemingly forgetting her own previous remarks. No, the one being rude is you, Ralph countered firmly, unable to hold back his frustration. Ha, huh. I sighed in exasperation before explaining. Actually, all of Lena's relatives are my clients. I spoke to them and asked them not to attend. Did you know, Lena, you once looked down on me as an insurance salesperson from a third-rate company? The company I work for is a multinational corporation, far larger than yours. I earn significantly more than you, and my company is globally renowned. I've been with them since the beginning of their local operations, managing a substantial client base and extensive network. As it happened, Lena's relatives were among my clients and they agreed to support my decision. By the way, when they learned the truth, they were shocked and decided to distance themselves from Lena. But she'll find out about that later, I added with a hint of irony. Lena muttered in stunned disbelief. Well, that's Lena for you. Slow on uptake, Ralph remarked with a hearty laugh, showing little sympathy. However, his laughter abruptly stopped and he turned serious. I cannot marry someone who disrespects my mother, no matter how intelligent or prestigious your company is. My mother deserves better than to be belittled. I stated firmly, my words almost spat out with determination. Lena and her parents-in-law stood silently, faces flushed with embarrassment, heads bowed. With the engagement terminated and the wedding cancelled, the event concluded soon after. Lena's parents, being sensible, apologized repeatedly to Ralph and me. They also agreed to cover all the wedding expenses with further compensation discussions scheduled for a later date. Lena's responsible parents would likely handle her recent actions. Subsequently, Lena resigned from her job. Although Ralph and Lena's workplace wasn't invited to the wedding, rumors of the incident circulated. Colleagues sympathized with Ralph but held Lena in low regard. In a workplace emphasizing teamwork, Lena became ostracized. Eventually, unable to endure the constant criticism, Lena resigned abruptly. She left a resignation letter on her desk and disappeared from the office. Before disappearing, Lena approached Ralph, pleading for reconciliation. I want us to get back together, she begged. And I want everyone at work to know I'm not a bad person. Ralph, however, firmly declined. With your attitude, going back to how things were is impossible. She also approached me multiple times asking me to convince Ralph to reconcile, but I chose not to engage with her requests. By now, Lena is likely estranged from her parents-in-law and her whereabouts and activities remain unknown to anyone. Neither Ralph nor I have any desire to seek out information about her. Three years have passed and Ralph and I live contentedly. We use the compensation money from Lena's parents to renovate our home. Ralph has since married someone else, a nurse introduced by a friend. She is straightforward and fearless, always looking out for me, and I value her honest advice. Ralph's new wife even offered to live with me, concerned about me being alone. I asked if her parents approved, and she reassured me they were happily married and wouldn't mind. So, Ralph's new family and I decided to share our newly renovated home. We are anticipating the arrival of a new family member soon. Ralph's wife is due to have a baby in about three months. Work keeps me busy and fulfilled, and soon our family will grow livelier and more joyful. I eagerly anticipate the upcoming days with a baby and feel motivated by the excitement of our future together.